Hi, I'm Lieutenant Norsoma Morgan, Training Officer with the New Construction Bureau. I'm Bill Gustin, Captain with the Training Division. Fire Prevention and Training are working together to produce a series of videos on code enforcement and fire protection systems. The first in our series will examine how to control the flow from sprinklers in mid and high rise buildings. A short circuit in a light fixture starts a fire in the pantry utility room in an apartment on the 15th floor of a 30-story building. Within moments, the fire is extinguished with one sprinkler head. The sprinkler system performed exactly as it was designed to do. Within 90 seconds of sprinkler activation, a water flow is initiated and transmitted to a central station fire alarm facility which notifies the fire department. Upon arrival, Firefighters check the alarm system's annunciator panel, which indicates water flow 15th floor on the display. Once firefighters reach the apartment, they find the fire extinguished, but with the open sprinkler head still flowing 25 gallons per minute. Frantically, they search for a valve to shut down the flow of water. Listening to desperate radio transmissions, an engine company driver engineer transmits that he has found a valve to shut down the sprinkler system, a post indicator valve on the sidewalk in front of the building. It occurs to no one that closing this PIV cuts off the city water supply to the building's diesel fire pump. This cuts off the water to cool the pump and the diesel engine driving it, causing them to overheat and self-destruct. Firefighters also do not realize that there are 15 floors of water column above them that, under gravity pressure, continues to flow out of the open sprinkler head, making its way into the electric meter room and elevator hoistway, causing water to short-circuit the hoistway door interlocks, rendering the elevators out of service. To make matters worse, water entering the meter room flows into bus ducts and shorts out the main panel on the first floor. The preceding scenario is not a fantasy. It happens. And it happens in large part because there is a disconnect between fire prevention personnel who are familiar with fire protection systems and operations personnel who receive very little training in these systems. Had these firefighters been trained in building systems, they would have known that mid- and high-rise residential and commercial buildings commonly have combination sprinkler standpipe systems. Piping for sprinklers is supplied by standpipes located in the stairwell. In the case of the 30-story building, the proper way to stop the flow to the sprinkler head is to close the floor isolation valve at the 15th floor stair landing and open the one inch drain to drain the water in the sprinkler piping between the isolation valve and the open sprinkler head. Keep in mind that in some buildings isolation valves for odd number floors may be in a different stairwell than even numbered floors. So if you don't find a floor isolation valve in a stairwell, look in the other stairwells. In large buildings, sprinklers may be supplied by two or more standpipes requiring the closing of two or more floor isolation valves. Remember, leave the valves in the street alone. Shutting off control valves in the fire pump room or at the base of the riser will result in the same water column effect examined previously. 